Welcome back, builders, adventurers, and engineers, to another episode of our Civil Engineering series. My name is K-Hug, you can call me Kyler, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I, a civil engineer, am going to continue our journey of civil engineering within the realm of Minecraft. Today, we are diving into the crucial process of site analysis and planning. Whether in the real world or in Minecraft, understanding and preparing your site is the foundation of any successful construction project. Before any construction project can begin, it is crucial to understand the site you're working with. So let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. Site analysis involves examining the characteristics of a location to determine its suitability for a project. In the real world, this means studying factors like topography, soil quality, environmental impact, and the existing infrastructure. In Minecraft, we follow similar principles to ensure that our builds are stable and harmonious with the landscape. Though we don't typically go around assessing contours, checking soil mediums, we all spend that time looking for that picture-perfect building location. Whether that be an open plains, a small oasis, a seaside beachfront, for any other location, we are constantly analyzing the site location options and weighing our design requirements with the world's natural terrain. First, let's talk about topography. Topography is the arrangement of the natural physical features of an area, just as I previously mentioned, and that was mentioned in episode number one. In Minecraft, this means understanding the lay of the land. The procedurally generated worlds of Minecraft are full of many many different terrain features from rolling hills to meandering valleys large or small bodies of water and the most sought after open flat areas a good topographic survey helps us determine the best locations for our roads our buildings and other infrastructure using maps and tools like elevation markers we can create a detailed topographic map of our site Notice how we have two different color selections here. The red symbolizes major contours and the green are going to be minor. And if you aren't sure what contours are on a topographic map, contours are just the elevation changes. For example, on this site in particular we have here, I have used the red concrete to symbolize the increments of five. If I pull up our overlay, we are stating at Y equals 70 meaning that this is on a 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. The green contours, those are the minor contours. These contours are on every increment of 1, being 1, 2, 3, skip 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10 is skipped again, and so on and so forth. This information will guide us in deciding where to place our structures to minimize excavation and earth moving efforts. In engineering, minimizing your grading and earthwork is an absolute priority. Not only does this make the construction progress quicker by making minimal changes, but it is also a significant benefactor of cost. The less dirt and land to be altered, the lower the cost. The next consideration in site selection is soil quality. In the real world, geotechnical engineers perform soil tests to determine its suitability for construction. Factors like the soil composition and the stability are absolutely crucial. In reality, sandy soils might require deeper foundations, just as we would consider in our Minecraft build. Knowing your type helps in planning stable foundations and preventing future issues. In Minecraft, these considerations probably aren't near as apparent as they are in the real world. However, one good example is avoid building your home next to or on top of any of these Minecraft dudes. Because, well, if you build a house on top of this thing here, something like that could happen, and then your house will be floating in midair. But on the flip side of these two examples, a sturdy foundation looks something like the cross section behind me. That is a nice stone foundation with varying levels of dirts and clays. This helps limit the amount of foundation support that we need which also minimizes cost, and it prevents our homes from collapsing under duress. Yeah, that's kind of important. Another key consideration is the environmental impact. In real-world projects, we assess how construction will affect the natural environment and wildlife. Maintaining harmony between nature and the developed world is essential in today's world of engineering. 
Without getting too lost into the specifics, there are many factors outlined in local governing agency requirements when assessing a site. Things such as a tree protection, uh, minimum green space, and maximum impervious areas are a couple items we need to keep record of. And if you want to know more about those factors, we'll dive into those in a later episode. Now, in Minecraft specifically, we often aim to preserve the natural beauty of our world while developing new areas. Though it isn't a requirement, it sure does look absolutely great when our builds fit harmoniously into the surrounding landscape. For example, it probably wouldn't look right if we had a desert village nestled into an oak forest. Yuck. I'm upset with myself for even having that thought. Lastly, we have existing infrastructure. In real-world projects, we consider roads, utilities, and pre-existing buildings already in place. These utilities may be an existing water and or storm sewer lines that we either need to avoid coming into conflict with and damaging, or also maintaining for the use of a service connection for our new development. The existing road networks are also maintained in order to provide future connection points for homes, businesses, or whatever else we're designing. And lastly, existing buildings, well, we should probably avoid the need to demolish anyone's home. Because something like that can happen. In Minecraft, this means pre-existing villages, railways, or pathways. Sometimes we can find ourselves itching for companionship, so integrating our home into the network of an existing village can often bring life and serenity to our builds. Understanding what's already there helps us integrate new projects seamlessly. This means designing our builds to complement and connect with the existing structures, just as we would see in a real city. In doing so, we can remodel an existing home. A vacant home, mind you. But we can also connect a new roadway and nestle our new builds within the community to become one with the people. One of us. One of us. One of us. Taking the sample of land and creating a quick map. This is very similar to what a topographic map would look like in the world of engineering. Now, there's obviously some significant differences and, well, that is because this is Minecraft, in fact. But you can see how helpful that these maps truly are when you look at them in detail to help provide the lay of the land. If this didn't have any sort of elevation markers, it would just look like a nice flat open plains area. But you can see that there is many different points of elevation change by adding in these contour lines. Now, the only thing missing here is contour labels. In most engineering topographic surveys, there will be contour labels on each one of these individual contours. Those are just a number value which signifies what elevation each line is. This would be maybe a 720, a 721, 722. Without that, you would not be able to ascertain which level you are. Now, with all of this information, topography, soil quality, environmental impact, and existing infrastructure, we are ready to create a comprehensive site plan. This plan will help guide our construction process, ensuring we build efficiently and sustainably. Let's jump into a quick time lapse as we lay out the specific items we discussed into this blank canvas and set the foundation for our new layout. Now, before I get officially started, there are some color samples that I want to go over. And that are the ones that I have in my hand. I am going to use the blue to signify any new waters we have. This may be something like a drainage basin or just a recreational pond. Purple is going to reflect any of the buildings that we build. And lastly, pink is going to be our road network. And I chose these colors just so they're different from all of the utilities that we used in the previous section. Now let's get into that time lapse and lay out this city.
As quick and rough as it may be, this is a good foundation for setting up a new small village. Now, I did use the reference sizes for most villager homes, with the exception of a couple larger and odd-shaped buildings. But throughout this plan, you can see that our road work is pretty symmetrical in the beginning. I wanted to use two different types of road networks. In most larger towns and cities, you will see a gridded road system, where every grid is on a straight line, allowing us to maximize the space and minimize the amount of modifications to the terrain. Up here on the hill, where things get a little more rocky and, and flattening the terrain and the earthwork is going to be much more difficult, we went with a more meandering road that will help minimize the amount of grading by following the contours of the land. Now, each one of the homes is set up roughly in a randomized pattern here, but you get the gist of what we wanted to do. And I guess I just realized we forgot to mark out our detention basins. It was pretty evident of where the water was going to go, but for obvious representation, I've laid out a little dashed line on a couple contours here to show the low points. It was pretty obvious already we had a big depression in this area, nestled in between all of these homes, and this will make for a perfect recreational pond area, and also a good location for some detention. Likewise, we have another low depressional area over here, which looks like we would have to build some sort of dam along through here in order to retain this water if we needed extra volume in, in this system uh, before this outfalled completely into the existing water here. And likewise, the pre-existing water front, uh, we went ahead and marked that as well. And this is going to be a nice place to put some homes with some waterfront access. Now, taking a look at the map, we can now see our water areas here and here. Those are definitely going to signify a couple of low points as well as the waterfront along here. We didn't mark out the rest of it because it's pretty evident what that is. And there you have it. By thoroughly analyzing and planning our site, we lay out the groundwork for successful and sustainable construction projects. Whether in the real world or here in Minecraft, good preparation is key for any great build. Now that we've gone through and analyzed the topography and set up a nice site plan, the next step in this phase of the construction plan is to go ahead and do grading and earthwork, and that's what we'll touch on next time. So, thanks for joining us today in this episode of our Minecraft Civil Engineering series. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more in-depth tutorials and creative builds. Happy planning, everyone! Goodbye!